So let's talk about databases now that we know what data is and which kinds of data we have. We're going to use a database in this course section, but before we use it, it's important to understand that there are two main philosophies, you could say, two main approaches for databases out there. There are more than two in reality, but there are two big and important ones. And that are SQL or SQL databases and NoSQL or NoSQL databases. And these are two fundamentally different philosophies uh, on how they approach storing data, which we have here. And we can use either of the two philosophies. There then exist concrete implementations of these philosophies. I'll name a few in a second. And we can choose which one best fits our website needs. Now let me start with explaining what SQL databases are all about. The main thing about SQL databases is that they store data in tables. The NoSQL databases, on the other hand, store data as documents in collections. Now, this might not tell you much, so let's take a closer look. In a SQL database, data would be stored like this. We have a table with three columns, for example. The column names are ID, name, and age. And then data entries are stored as rows in those tables. So the first entry would have an ID of 1, a name of max, and an age of 31. The second entry here would have an ID of 2, a name of menu, and an age of 32. And in SQL databases, we can also connect multiple tables through relations. We're also going to take a look at that later in the course. And we can then query these tables by, for example, saying, give me the values of the column name, so max and menu, for all entries where the age is greater or equal than 32. And this would then, in this case, exactly return menu, because it gets the value from the column name for all the entries where the age is greater than or equal to 32, which is only the case for the second entry. But we're going to take a closer look at these queries and how to work with data throughout this section. Now, in NoSQL databases, we have this document-based approach, and that basically means that we don't have rows or columns, but instead we have a list of documents, which looks something like this. It looks a bit like dictionaries, you could say. It's not written in Python, it's not Python exclusive or specific, but it looks like dictionaries, except for that the key names are not between quotes. But in the end, we have a long list of self-contained documents. We don't have a clear schema for the entire table, even though both documents have the same fields here in this example, they don't need to have the same fields. We could have two documents with totally different fields in the same collection, Whereas with SQL, that's not really the thing. There, all entries in the same table have the same schema. So they have the same columns, which they fill. That's not the case for documents in NoSQL. We have more flexibility there. And then we have just a long list of these documents, which we can query. Now, SQL and NoSQL are just the philosophies, as I said, the different ways of storing data. And we then have concrete engines, concrete products that implement these philosophies. In the case of SQL, for example, the most popular SQL database engines are MySQL, PostgreSQL, SQLite. We also would have Oracle SQL or Microsoft SQL. And we then can install these database engines on a server, for example, spin up a database server, and then run queries against that database. And that's also something we're going to do in this course. We're going to run queries against SQL databases. Now, in the case of NoSQL, popular implementations, popular products would be MongoDB or CassandraDB. Now, these are then databases which we can also set up and install or use cloud-based services to, well, interact with them, run queries, store our documents, query our documents, and so on. Now, that's SQL and NoSQL, and you might be wondering which one is better? Which one should you use? And the simple answer is, for many websites, it won't matter too much, and it comes down to personal preferences. 
But of course, there are some real differences as well. Depending on how exactly you're going to use your data, how your data will be structured, if you need that flexibility of not having the same schema for all entries or not, you might lean towards a NoSQL or a SQL implementation. And I have a detailed comparison video and article which you'll find attached to this lecture if you want to learn more. But to be very honest, as I said, for many websites it won't really matter too much and Django has great support for SQL built-in, therefore we're going to use SQL in this course. It's the most common database you use with most SQL websites and therefore of course it's the approach I want to teach you. You can also use Django with no SQL, but you will need to install extra packages for that, whereas a rich and great SQL support is built in. And in this course, we're therefore going to use SQL. Specifically, we're going to use SQLite because that's particularly easy to get started with. And therefore, let's now understand how exactly we would work with such a SQL database and how we would run queries there.